Hello students, in this video we'll prove Cauchy's theorem for two homotopic curves in a domain. Let's be given a function, a holomorphic function, f, which maps omega into c, and suppose that omega is open and connected, And suppose that gamma 1 and gamma 2 map 0, 1 into omega are two closed homotopic curves. Okay, they're homotopic. Then the integral over gamma 1 of f of zeta d zeta is equal to the integral over gamma 2 of f of zeta d zeta. That's Cauchy's theorem. Okay, excellent. So let's prove this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that the homotopy that is between these two curves is actually smooth to make my life a little bit easier for this, right? So proof. Suppose let gamma mapping 0, 1 cross 0, 1 into omega be the smooth homotopy. In general, homotopy is just continuous, right? But this proof, the proof that I'm going to give is much simpler than the proof which is a strictly continuous homotopy, right? There's no covering, there's no polygonal connectedness. It's much easier just to get this flavor of the, of the Cauchy theorem in this case, in the case of a smooth homotopy. Um, so what do we have with this? We have three conditions. We have that gamma of S0 is equal to gamma 1 of S. We have that gamma of S1 is equal to gamma 2 of S. And we have that gamma of 0T is equal to gamma of 1T. Like that, for all t. Okay, those are the three conditions for homotopy. Okay, and so now I'm going to do is I'm going to define a function. Define a function f of t, which is the integral from 0 to 1 of my function f of gamma of s of t, and then d gamma ds s t ds. And then what can I notice about this? From this definition, it immediately follows that what? Well, let's look at what would f of this implies that f, for example, of 0 is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of f of gamma s 0, and then d gamma d s s 0 ds, right? Now, what is this? Well, gamma of s 0 is my gamma 1. So this is exactly just the integral over gamma 1 of f of zeta d zeta. And then similarly, f of 1 is equal to the integral over gamma 2 of f of zeta d zeta, like that. Beautiful. Now let me compute the derivative of f. So it's the derivative of f, f prime of t is what? f prime of t is going to be the integral from 0 to 1. Here I'm using the smoothness now. I'm using the fact that it's smooth. So I can use Leibniz rule of f prime of gamma of s of t times d gamma dt, d gamma ds, plus f of gamma of s and t, and then d squared gamma dt ds. And this is all a ds integral over here, ds integral. And now, of course, I'm going to make the observation that this is exactly equal to what? So going from here to here, what have we used? So first make an observation that we've used the Leibniz rule over here. So going from this to this, I've used Leibniz as a rule. for differentiating integrals. Okay, excellent. Again, I'm using the smoothness there. Now this, of course, is just the integral from zero to one of d by ds of what? Of f of gamma of s and t, and then d gamma dt of s and t ds. Let's check that. What's the s derivative of this thing? It's going to be f prime of 
d gamma dt times d gamma ds, good. And then f of gamma of s of t times the st derivative of this thing. Perfect, so it works out. So now it's actually a perfect derivative. So this is gonna be f of gamma of s and t, and then d gamma dt of s and t, evaluated from s equals zero to s equals one. Good. So this is gonna be f of gamma of one t, d gamma d uh, t of 1 t, and then minus f of gamma of 0 t, and then d gamma d t, 0 t. But look at this condition over here. This condition over here says what? This condition over here says that f of 0 of t is equal to f of 1 of t for all t, right? So let's look at what these things are. So first of all, these expressions over here are identical to each other. So th this expression over here, this f and this f over here are exactly the same thing. Now let's compute the derivative over here. So what would d gamma dt of 1 t look like? It'd be the limit as h goes to 0, the limit of what? The limit of gamma of when this t goes to zero at that particular point, when this gamma of t goes to zero of, um, well, it's even easier just to see if we just say that this is going to be equal to what? This has to be equal to, I claim that this partial derivative is equal to this partial derivative. And why is that the case? Well, the case is that these two functions of t are identical for all values of t. So their derivatives have to be equal by virtue by the difference quotient, right? So those two things are equal. And so this forces, so since implies that f prime of t is equal to zero. So f of t is a constant. f of zero, right? But it's, since it's a constant, f of zero is equal to f of one, and that proves the Cauchy theorem, right? Now, what's a typical application of this? A typical application is that if you have a region over here with no holes, right? So example, if you have a region if, my, if my omega is a circle, for example, if this is my region over here, let's say this is a little bit of a bigger disk, right? And then I have a point over here. If there's no holes in my region, I can contract, I can do, make a simple homotopy that's to contract my uh, circle to that point, right? So for example, I can do this. I can say, let's look at this homotopy over here, gamma of S and T. Let's say that point over there is P, right? It's just gonna be P T plus what? plus if it's a circle, plus p, and then a 1 minus t, e to the what? Let's say just e to the i theta, for example, uh, is a circle of that radius, right? So this is center of that p, right? So I plug in p. When I plug in t equals 0, I get uh, this circle over here. So that the circle is going to be what? It's going to be p plus e to the i theta, for example. And of course, when t is equal to zero, I get p plus e to the i theta, that's this circle over here. So this is p plus e to the i theta, that's my circle, right? And then when t is equal to one, I just get the point p over here, right? So in other words, if I can contract this circle to zero, so this the, this, the circle, of course, is a star-like domain, right? So, so I can contract it to any point over here, p, and that says that the integral over the circle is the integral over p, but the integral over p is equal to zero, right? So that gives, a, a, that gives us the classical Cauchy formula, right? That says that the integral over of a holomorphic function over a circle, for example, over t, for example, of f of zeta d zeta if f is holomorphic, is the same thing as the integral over just a single point, the origin of f of zeta d zeta, and that's zero. So that's the more typical Cauchy theorem. So the Cauchy theorem, the, this, this simple example over here is exactly the full force of the first Cauchy theorem, right? That says that if you have a function which is holomorphic on a circle, you can find a primitive and it integrates to zero. That's because I can explicitly find a homotopy between a circle centered at a point P and uh, the point P itself, right? And so if you integrate over a single point, you get nothing, right? So in other words, that gives us the, Cau the Cauchy theorem is recovered by this Cauchy theorem via homologies. Now with this uh, what this homotopy result will get us is this is the is the essential component of proving the Laurent expansion because what this tells me is if I have an annular domain, I can basically fit two circles inside that annulus, and those two curves are homotopic inside the annulus, and that allows me to actually conclude what the Laurent expansion is for one versus the other, and we'll see that in our further video. Thank you very much.